inside Donald Glover's Childish Gambino Rise to the Top in Hollywood Donald Glover has risen to the top of Hollywood royalty with his brilliantly hilarious creative mind and his acute political awareness and fearlessness. Not only is the man talented, but he isn't afraid to take risks. As the head of FX says, underestimate Donald Glover at your own peril. And after you hear the inside story on Glover's rise to fame, you'll agree too. The prolific creator and his alter ego Childish Gambino have only just begun. With a new Deadpool series in development and soon starring in a film opposite Letitia Wright and Rihanna, there's no stopping our man of the hour. If you're new to the trendy, welcome! Hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date with everything in pop culture. Now, let's check out Glover's rise to the top of the Hollywood pyramid. Donald Glover has transformed into many different things over the years, but still remains grounded to continue his rise in Hollywood, straight to the top, or as Drake would rap, all the way up. Glover said in an interview back in 2013 to Hollywood Reporter, I know it takes time, and you have to make people feel comfortable. You have to make them understand that you speak their language, that you speak old white man. Well, Glover must have perfected that language because now in 2018, he has risen to the top of Hollywood royalty. But yes, there was a time before Donald Glover and his musical name Childish Gambino were not household names. It's hard to believe with how much we see his name around now, but it's true. Glover grew up like everyone. Well, sort of. We just mean he grew up not famous. And no, as much as we're all wondering, is Donald from the planet of aliens who took over Hollywood? He isn't. He's a human like us. But he's one heck of a creative genius. Let's go back at the beginning and dissect how all this came to be for the man who once lived in Georgia as a Jehovah's Witness. Donald grew up in a pretty conservative family and was voted as most likely to write for The Simpsons, a TV show that his dad wouldn't let him watch. He must have still been quite the funny guy for that nod. But it seems that his classmates were pretty spot on, as years later Glover was hired to write for the hit series 30 Rock. Prior to joining the writing team at NBC, Glover studied at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts and was around the New York improv scene. In 2006, Glover graduated with a degree in dramatic writing, but it was when he joined the Derrick Comedy Group that things started to take off for him. It wasn't because the group was super popular, but it was when one of their videos went viral and caught the eyes of producers at 30 Rock. The specific producer, David Miner, read a spec script for the TV show, can you guess? Yes, The Simpsons, that Glover had written. They loved it, and he was brought on to his first major writing job. Sure, seems easy so far, but Glover's is still one in a million to get those specific opportunities that led to that job. Hollywood always wants us to to believe that this story could happen to anyone, and maybe with enough work, it could. But the fact is that Glover stood out, and continues to do so. Glover stayed on in the writer's room from 2006 to 2009 and was featured a few times in the show as well, until the moment he decided he needed to explore other forms of creativity, specifically acting and later music. According to Tina Fey in Time magazine, Glover requested a meeting with her and the producer Robert Carlock. He spoke to them about how he was so grateful for the opportunity but felt he should leave to pursue acting. Since Glover was still with his Derek comedy crew, they worked together to make their first feature film. This film ended up doing very well and was called Mystery Team, which premiered at Sundance in 2009. The film also starred Aubrey Plaza and Ellie Kemper and was picked up by Roadside Attractions as a distributor. They also did such things as Dear White People and Lake Bells in a World. Donald may have not yet fully hit Hollywood yet, but he was on his way through the comedy world and the independent film scene. Glover kept working hard and always was looking for more to do in his life creatively. One could say he works hard or that he just loves doing it so much it isn't work. Donald, if you're there, what is it? Maybe both. Moving along. That same year, Glover landed a role in the hit series Community, which would change his life forever. He was playing the role of Troy Barnes, and the show took off to worldwide success, making him a star in his own name. But still not Hollywood royalty. Don't worry, though. He's getting there at this point. When he left NBC as a writer, Tina Fey agreed with him. In an interview, she said, Of the many writers who have suggested this over the past 20 years, Donald is the only one with whom I've ever agreed. 100 he should go be a star. And that was exactly what he was doing by locking down that role in Community. It was only nine days later that he booked the role as Troy Barnes, so his instincts to leave were right. During his four-year stint on the series, his musical alter ego began to emerge. 
While he was playing the goofy and heartfelt dude in Community, he was also creating music under the name of, yep, you know, Childish Gambino, a name that Glover has admitted multiple times was generated through the Wu-Tang Clan name generator. Have you ever tried that? If not, see what your name would be. Fans began to wonder how serious Glover was about this whole Childish Gambino phase. He soon proved that it was very serious. Gambino released EPs and single tracks all over the place that quickly began to catch the ears of many music lovers. It was when he released his debut studio album, Camp, that people knew he was taking music as serious as his acting. During the day, shooting NBC's community series alongside Alison Brie and Gillian Jacobs. Throughout this time of his life, Glover also did many stand-up shows and specials. In 2010, his first half-hour stand-up special was premiered on Comedy Central. In 2011, his hour-long special called Weirdo aired. And if you haven't seen that, you're in for a massive treat. In the Weirdo special, he jokes about an internet campaign that wanted to see Glover as the next Peter Parker in the new Spider-Man. Though even creator Stan Lee spoke out about his support in the hashtag Donald for Spider-Man, he still didn't audition for the role. Well, while it ultimately ended up going to Andrew Garfield. Still, Glover found his way to the set of the Spider-Man film in 2017 in Spider-Man Homecoming. He played Aaron Davis, so maybe the campaign did end up paying off. Now it had only been a few years and Glover had made himself into this multifaceted, multi-talented man. He walked away from Community and wrote in a series of handwritten notes shown on Instagram that he was afraid the creator Dan Harmon hated him. He also assured fans he wasn't leaving the comedy just to pursue his music career career, but it was something deeper than that. It was clear, however, that Dan only has love for Glover. He said in an interview about Donald's talent that he would often improv and end a scene perfectly. We quote, I remember there was a transitional point where we literally started writing in the script, and then Donald says something funny. So after making the hard decision to step away from the cult TV series, where he was so deeply valued, he began focusing on his soon-to-be-released second studio album. When he did leave, Harmon also said, look at his ascent. If I were Donald Glover, I would try eating the moon, because we're not so sure he can't until he tries since everything he tries he succeeds at. So it wasn't only Glover who believed in himself, but also the show's creator and obviously Tina Fey who supported his earlier move. Years later, Dan acknowledged that when Donald left, it was the death of the show. At the time, Harmon said he didn't want to believe that, but now that time has passed, he sees that it was. In 2013, Childish Gambino released his second studio album called Because of the Internet, which really made his musical alter ego take off. The album debuted at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 200. At the same time, a small show he created got sold to FX, which he would end up writing, producing, directing, and acting in. That show would end up being the Emmy and Golden Globe winning show Atlanta. So over the three years that he developed the show with FX, he also took many roles in different major projects. Glover acted in Magic Mike XXL as an Atlanta stripper, the Oscar-nominated film The Martian, The Lazarus Effect, and the second season of Girls. Among many other projects as well as working on music for many other projects. Let's be real. Glover was not only taking over Hollywood at this point, but he was beginning to own it. 2015 rolled around and FX began chattering about the new show Atlanta, which they described as the comedy set against the backdrop of the Atlanta music scene. Sounds like the perfect show for Glover to have created. When it launched on September 16, 2016, everyone realized that the show was so much more than just that. Glover later told The New Yorker about how he kind of misled FX to create such a masterpiece. We quote, they were thinking it'd be me and Craig Robinson horsetailing around, and it'll be kind of like Community, and it will be on for a long time. I was Trojan horsing FX. If I told them what I really wanted to do, it wouldn't have gotten made. So yes, he did trick Hollywood into making him a star, and we're totally into it. The show was an instant hit, premiering at the highest rating for a basic cable comedy since three years earlier with Inside Amy Schumer. The show got nominated for six Emmys, and Donald walked away with two statues, one for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy and another for Outstanding Directing. The age of Donald Glover royalty had now arrived. Obviously, the show was quickly renewed and is now in its third season. FX also quickly locked Glover into 
creating more shows for the network because no one wants to lose Glover. To add to the long list of his accomplishments, Glover also released his third studio album called Awaken My Love, which incorporated more funk and soul into his music than ever before. The hit Redbone put Childish Gambino on the map for anyone who hadn't heard his music. The album debuted at number five and earned Glover his first Grammy. Talk about needing a shelf for all those trophies. His success and rise didn't stop there. He continued to land huge roles in major studio films. John Watts, the director of 2017's Spider-Man Homecoming, approached Glover himself for a small but meaningful role. Watts said to Glover, if you don't do the part, we aren't going to include it. Of course Donald took the part. In a way, Glover is living out many childhood aspirations and dreams. That is, except his dream of becoming a wedding planner. But there is still time for that, so maybe we'll see him planning weddings one of these days. Even though he doesn't believe in marriage himself, Glover continues with hit roles. He was in Solo, a Star Wars story, playing Lando Lando, was given a special thanks in Marvel's Black Panther, will be playing Simba in 2019's The Lion King, and directed his own hit music video for his song Feels Like Summer. He also released the music video This Is America that blew the internet up with praise, controversy, and questions. Lastly, he signed on to Jairo Murray's new film Guava Island, also rumored to star in the film are Letitia Wright and Rihanna. What can we say? The man is killing it. About his role in Star Wars, Glover was thrilled as he was a longtime fan of the films himself. So the man has taken over Hollywood, and with apparently last album and tour as Childish Gambino, fans are already sad. But don't worry, Glover has endless ideas up his sleeves for more creative pieces to throw out into the world for all of us to catch. Despite all his publicity, he's still a private man himself. He never mentions the name of his son or girl and just names her his partner. As Nick Grad, FX president of programming says, he likes to keep an air of mystery about himself and his process. Glover has reached the top but is going to explore space uncharted. When Hollywood Reporter asked him about people he had mentioned previously in their interview such as Ron Howard, Steve Martin, or Chris Roth, he answered, I don't want to be the next Ron Howard or the next anybody else. My job is to do what Ron could have never done. The next show he's incubating with FX will be Deadpool series he co-created. They'll share a writing staff with Atlanta and apparently in spring 2018 were in London living together in a house writing. As John Landgraf, the head of FX, puts it, underestimate Donald Glover at your own peril. And as Donald Glover says himself with a shrug, I just never saw the roadblocks. What are you most looking forward to next in Donald Glover's career? Do you find Glover inspiring creatively? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to give this video a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see y'all soon.